Ladies and gentlemen, in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through exactly how we doubled the amount of leads for one of our clients inside of one month. I'm gonna show you exactly what we did, the results we attained, and what you can do to your own account to see better results. Now, first things first, my name's Matt. I'm the Director of Business here at Tradesman Digital Marketing. We're a Google Ads agency that services service-based businesses, and we specialize in getting high-quality leads for our clients. Now let's look at the actual results we were able to achieve for our client. By the way, this client's name is Solar and it's with an X, it's a really cool company. They install solar panels all around Canada, a huge company, and we were happy to work with them. Um, we took over their account, the I believe it was the first couple days of July, so I'm gonna show you before we took over and after. One of the things about this client was the cost per conversion they were getting. Normally we're you know, worried about cost per conversion, getting that down. That's like our big focus for a lot of the accounts because they're just paying way too much money. For them, they were happy with what they were paying, they just needed more leads. So that was the objective of this account, get more leads, which is, you know, fun for me because that's like, hey, there's a lot of things we can do. So first things first, we look over this account in June, we see a whole bunch of things that I'm going to tell you in a second wrong with the account and that we can improve, we take them on. Uh, as you can see, 182 conversions for June and then $76 per click. Again, they were happy with this. We move to July, the month of July, and we go from 182 to 388 leads and a cost per conversion of 80. That went up a little bit as can be expected when you're just drastically increasing the amount of leads and you're starting a new campaign. Not everything's gonna be as dialed in as it was in the previous campaign. And then we move to August and our cost per lead comes back down and we're up to 393 leads and a $73.94 conversion. And honestly, this was pretty easy to achieve. And I'm gonna go through the things we did to get the leads essentially sky high compared to what they were at and what we were able to, you know, really change inside the account day one. So the very first thing we looked at and we look at with every single campaign we do is conversion tracking. Conversion tracking by far is gonna be the make or break for campaigns nowadays. Normally you're gonna to wanna to have them connected to a CRM so you can funnel that sales data back into Google Ads. That's gonna be different for every single CRM and it's very unique so you're gonna to have to look into that and read about it. But for this company, when we went to their actual website here, they had basic forms they were using but the issue was some of these forms were not even tracking. So you have the residential solar uh, form here, and then you would have another one, I think it was for commercial, I can't remember the exact form, but our team found out it was not tracking at all, and we were like, that's a big problem. And so we went in, immediately changed that, made sure it was actually tracking, because you can have a fantastic campaign, but if Google's not getting any of that data back in the account, it can't optimize for it, and it's just gonna assume maybe this landing page is bad, or maybe this campaign is bad, I'm just not gonna spend money on it, even if you're getting conversions, which is, you know, horrible. So that was one of the things right off the bat. The other one was they were not tracking phone calls in the lease, so we implemented phone call conversion tracking as well. This was two massive things. We're tracking all the conversions now, phone calls, and lead form submissions, and you might think, Matt, that's incredibly difficult to do. It's not, especially if you use some type of landing page builder. The process takes maybe five minutes. I have two completely free videos online, one to show you how to track all the different types of phone calls, call extensions uh, from your on-page website to the actual form submissions. Everything is covered, very simple to do. I'll link them up above, but please make sure conversion and tracking is actually in the account, and you can see the actual conversions coming back in and you can see that, hey, we are getting leads, we are getting sales, all of that stuff, because you're gonna need that information to actually optimize the account and get more and more leads. How is Google going to actually optimize for any of this if it's just clicking, just spending money blindly? It's not gonna be able to and you're gonna see terrible results. So please set up conversion tracking properly. The next thing I wanted to talk to you about is making sure the AI has enough control and making sure that it, it can freely spend the budget where it thinks it's gonna get the best returns or the most amount of leads. One of the things we noticed as soon as we took on this account was just the sheer amount of campaigns. As you can see here, it had over 50 campaigns. It's just a crazy amount of campaigns. And essentially what they were doing was targeting every specific city. Now, this isn't normally a huge problem, but it does make the account a lot more complicated than it needs to be. We normally recommend targeting at the provincial level. That's what we did for this account. But another strategy could have been also just sharing the budget amongst all of these cities. That way it could have actually optimized for what cities are performing better, getting more leads and getting more account success. 
None of these campaigns were actually sharing the budget, which resulted in a lot of cities actually having a limited by budget symbol where it can't spend any more money because it's maxed out. And then other cities where it had essentially no search volume, no budget spent, but it had the budget and it wasn't using it. And what happens is you just have a whole bunch of cities, one's either maxed out or one's seeing nothing, and you have a whole bunch of budget that's not being used. That's what was happening. So one solution to that is just sharing the budget. That's easy enough to do. You can come over here to tools and hit shared budgets and create one, or just bring it back to the provincial level like we did to minimize the complication. We don't wanna have normally like 50 campaigns. We wanna have a handful of them, especially if we're going after different provinces and stuff. I get having the different campaigns and being able to go after specific provinces, but you don't wanna normally have like a gazillion campaigns. It just makes things too complicated for any one person to normally manage. Now, the next thing I wanted to talk to you about is actually going through and testing different campaigns. One of the things they had running when we took on the campaign was a performance max campaign. They didn't have any call only campaigns and they had a couple search campaigns. I'm a huge fan of all three and all three can be used with great success. It just depends on the scenario. And so we actually looked at the performance max campaign. It was not doing well, so we opted to pause it. Also, they didn't have the CRM on the backside to actually integrate in the sales data into this. So you can actually optimize for leads, but it's gonna get you terrible quality of leads. This is not what they wanted to do. So we stayed away from performance max. The next thing we looked at was testing the search campaigns and call only ads campaigns. Uh, call only didn't do great for this campaign. Uh, honestly, I kind of get it. It's like it, you're buying a massive solar product, 20, 30, $40,000. You probably want to look at the person's website, testimonial, stuff like that. Uh, but the search campaign did absolutely fantastic. And that's what we were able to optimize with. And this is something that I think is super important for most accounts is testing, testing, and testing where so many people just get married to one campaign. I like search campaigns. I like call only ads campaigns. I like performance max, but I'm not married to one. You always have to be flexible. And sometimes a performance max is gonna outperform a search campaign. And sometimes a call only ads campaign might perform outperform a search campaign. It's just in your situation. And you have to be able to essentially detach yourself and not be married to this campaign, which I see so many Google ads agencies are just like, we, you gotta do this, you gotta run display ads, or you gotta do this. And it's like, that might not be the best for the client. Just look at the data and figure out what's best for the clients and then optimize from there. Don't say you have to do X, Y, Z. And that's something I hope you guys can take away from this. Just keep testing, um, try out new different types of campaigns, especially if one's not working. Uh, like I said, search for this one did really, really well and we were happy with it. And that's the one we opted to go with. The next thing I wanted to talk to you about is the actual landing pages. The landing pages for the solar campaign weren't great. It was a website and uh, they did give us a decent amount of pages to work with, which was good. I wish we had been able to bring them over to landing pages. They just didn't want to do that. They were happy with their website and hey, there are limitations to running a Google ads campaign, especially when you have owners and other people involved. But one of the things we did do was continue testing the different pages. So for residential, we checked through all of these, commercial, their portfolio. We were trying to figure out what pages convert best and just continued testing. And this was another reason we were able to increase the conversion rate a little bit and go from there and get better results, generate more leads for our clients. And if you're running any sort of Google ads account, I would highly recommend getting some sort of landing page. They generally convert like four to five times higher than a normal website, which again, like I really wish we were able to get landing pages on this account. I think the results would have been even higher and it would have been just absolutely incredible. But it is what it is. By the way, if you are looking for a landing page builder, I would recommend checking out Landingly. It's super cheap, super easy to use, and that's the landing page builder we use here at Tradesman Digital Marketing. Also, I'll link up above a free video of how to build a high converting landing page so you guys can get off on the right foot. We also have a course for how to build landing page and downloadable templates. Uh, I love landing pages, if you can't tell, but definitely check out landing page builders of literally use any type of landing page builder. You don't got to use this. Just use a landing page. It will save you and make you so much money inside Google ads, especially if you're already running an optimized campaign. Now, the final thing I wanted to show you inside of this account that was making a huge difference was actually going in and A-B testing these ads. One of the things they just were not doing was actually regularly optimizing these ads. So any optimization whatsoever resulted in a massive gain for us, uh, especially in terms of click-through rate, which generally upped our quality score and allowed us to actually get more leads, more clicks, more sales at the end of the day. It was really, really substantial. And I wanted to show you just what I mean by that is this is our demo account. If we go into here and let's do one specific ad group so you guys can see, this should have three ads in it. 
What you would want to do is you'll come in here, you'll see one ad is outperforming all the other ads. Generally, it's a higher click through rate. Normally, it has a decent amount of impression. So you can actually make a decision based off the amount of data you have. You're not just like, oh, it has one click, you know, switch it off or switch it on. You'll see that one ad is performing better than all the other ads. Once you see that, you can come over here, duplicate the ad. I would say duplicate out the winning ad and then rewrite it and try to get it even better. With the losing ad, you can come over here and just hit pause on it and then keep testing and duplicating the winning ad. I find that it's a lot easier to go from a winning ad to a slightly better winning ad than it is to go from a losing ad to, you know, a A++ ad. I just, that's the way I like doing it and we find we have better results there. Now, if you wanna continue optimizing your Google Ads account and having better success, I would recommend checking out the Google Ads optimization checklist. As you can see now, there's already four people in here. It walks you through on what to do on a weekly, monthly, and three month basis. It also lets you jot down your results so you can see you're making progress month over month. And honestly, I just really like having something that I can look on and make sure we are making progress. We are seeing that we are regularly optimizing the account. We are seeing that, you know, we are reviewing the keywords. We are actually A-B testing everything and we are doing everything that should be done inside the account. And sometimes people just forget things. I am prone to forgetting things. There's a whole bunch of stuff always going on in my head. So I like having the little checklist and I, and I think it's a great little tool for running Google ads. By the way, this tool is completely free and the link for it is down below. Now, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, feel free to leave a comment down below. I will do my best to get back to it. Other than that, you guys have a wonderful day. Take care and I wish you all well.